It's my pleasure uh, to introduce our last speaker of the conference, my colleague Joe Hendricks, who will be talking about the standard library and what's going on in 2024. Uh, yeah, thank you, David. Um, and yeah, thank you for the organizers. Um, and for those of you staying up uh, later in Europe for uh, attending on a Friday night. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so my name is Joe Hendricks. I uh, am the maintainer of the Lean Standard Library. Um, I've been with the FRO since about uh, October. And uh, today I was going to talk about kind of our plans and kind of what's been going on uh, since I've been uh, involved with the, uh, the Standard Library. Okay, so so first of all, just what what is it? Um, if you're a MathLib user, um, you've probably heard of it, but um, you might not have. Yeah, you know, the distinction between standard and MathLib may not be completely clear. Um, but it's it's basically like in any other programming language. It's it's uh, the standard library that um, uh, users you know who aren't developing the language are expected to uh, sort of. Use and it's uh, this library is intended to provide uh, definitions, lemmas, tactics, meta programming facilities, anything that we think a lot of uh, lean users will want to have. Um, it's it needs to be designed as it's designed for the entire user base. It needs to be designed for beginners. So there needs to, we we um, want to focus on trying to keep things as simple as we can, uh, but no simpler. Um, uh, the the we, we want the library to be stable. We want operations in that to be fast so that people can rely on them rather than uh, having to rewrite um, operations. Um, it is, unlike, say, conventional languages, it is very, very verification focused um, in that we do need definition. We need lemmas and tactics for what we do. Um, and uh, it will build upon and extend definitions in lean core. Um, and uh, one of the things to work on in 2024 that we'll be working on early this year. We'll be making sure we can ship with lean releases. Uh, you will still be allowed to like use uh, your own versions, of course. So if you want to have a different variant of standard, you can, but there will be a version shipping with, with lean core. So you don't have to um, add that to your um, uh, lake files. Um, you just get the definitions for free. Um, the um so what what is in standard right now um it it has uh you know some missing declarations on lean core types that aren't needed for the compiler uh missing lemmas um um it has type classes and other abstractions that one might want uh for uh, uh lawful instances uh instances uh some concurrency utilities such as monadic lazy list meta programming facilities and tactics and commands that uh, just uh, aren't needed for core. Um, the philosophically, uh, we're we're um, I'm aligned with kind of the the Rust principle, which is to have a standard library that focuses on quality. It's not necessarily minimal, but it 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 just because of manpower and other like limitations of of bandwidth, we want to. Uh, um, you know, it will be a relatively small library, but focused on like having really high quality. Um, and uh, so, but we, as part of quality, that means good limit coverage for operations. And we want to rely, be able to rely on Lake for providing packages and other functionality that isn't in standard. Um, and so both performance and clarity are important in standard. So, um, you know, if we have operations, we may have like one version that we use for clarity for the specification and then a separate one for the um, um, uh, for performance for like, um, so this was like a, and so for that we're relying on the CSIMP capability so we can substitute uh, one definition for another and this this just shows that um, syntax um, the the data types that we have um, um, this slide may be a little hard we have primitive types aggregates and data structures. Uh, the kind of the core sort of data types, um, and uh, and we provide efficient implementation of operations on those types, uh, lemmas about the OS operations, as well as lemmas and con con uh, stitching, connecting structures together. So like converting from a different uh, a hash map and a, a regular map, an arrays to list and so on. Um, so we want to provide like an integrated library that lets you sort of work with a variety of theories. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we think that, you know, it's, it's because of this, you know, really the, the number of operations is going to be fairly small. 
Um, uh, but for women's in tactics, we can be a lot more inclusive because uh, those uh, um, uh, provide capabilities that users can opt into rather than sort of cons constraining what users want to do, uh, can, can um, rather than cons constraining, forcing users to use things a certain way. Um, and we want to try to be careful with simp annotation so that we don't surprise people by blowing up terms and so on. Um, now, just to kind of show some some data about um, uh, you know statistics on how big this is, uh, the uh, uh, back in November, uh, I did some analysis. We have just under three hundred definitions and sixteen hundred theorems. Uh, today, we've grown. Uh, we're you can see we're slowly growing the number of definitions. The number of theorems is going up faster as we sort of round out missing lemmas, uh, but we're still much smaller than MathLib. Um, so the and that's because we really want to focus on things that are just very broadly useful, and we can provide states to a uh, stable interface for. Um, I think the other thing to note about this is, in comparison with you know most languages, we have a much higher sort of multiplier because for every operation, there's there's potentially many lemmas. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that's going to, you know, a key difference between this and say like the Rust standard library is that we have to be even more conservative in that there's sort of this 10x overhead where if you add uh, a new operation that we think users are going to want in their specifications, we have to think about all the lemmas. So uh, the the idea like, well, Rust has this, so standard should have this is is not clear cut to me. Um, that's that might be that's a motivating factor, but it's not sorry the, the motivating factor. Similar with uh, Haskell's base libraries, like the fact that uh, like one programming language has this capability has this operation uh, suggests we should probably consider we should we should consider it. But we, I think we should need to be fairly conservative in that when we consider that we also have to consider what other lemmas do we need uh, and uh, how do we. Um, make sure we have sort of a, um, a polished experience so that people, when they see an operation, they can have confidence they, they have the reasoning they want about it. Um, I think as we develop new tactics, uh, hopefully this, this ratio will go down. Um, for example, Omega can replace some of the arithmetic uh, lemmas uh, by uh, automatically discharging things. Um, so, you know, the, the priorities for 2024 are aligned with kind of the overall FRO. We, you know, we're considering scalability, scalability, usability, proof automation, documentation, and broad application. Um, and so we're, uh, yeah. So now concretely in terms of current priorities, uh, meaning over the next few months, uh, uh, you saw in the, um, this morning, the, the lean, um, um, a monthly meeting, uh, user meeting, um, that Omega has been introduced, and Leo described that in a fair bit of detail. Uh, this, so that remains one of the things of like improving Omega, uh, adding, finding places where it can't detect. Um, it's it's missing uh, the ability to infer, uh, um, extract sort of um, arithmetic conditions from definitions, um, and then uh, and integrating those into other things like ASOP. Um, uh, the thing I'm, I've been working on is uh, standard versions of some MathLib tactics for searching the MathLib database, so exact, apply, rewrite. Um, and I'll go into a little more detail of that just because because that's what I've been quite familiar with. Uh, we plan to ship standard with Lean. Um, this this will be coming in a, in a month or, or so, uh, while you can still use different versions um, if you, if you want to be tethered to a specific version, um, perhaps because you have a fork. Um, uh, another feature is going to be tools for identifying missing lemmas and operations. So, um, for example, ensuring that uh, all functions that return a list uh, should have uh, length, membership, and uh, sort of get operations defined, um, perhaps other operations, uh, similar for arrays, uh, being able to convert to list, um, making sure that if there is some operation that works over arrays that we can do a list analog in case people want to sort of convert their their code for for theorem proving purposes between different representations um and then i think uh once that as that's matures uh in, starting to incorporate some of these bit these automated decision procedures i think lean sat is probably the most promising one so that is a connection to a sat solver then we can enable uh reasonable propositional logic as well as bit vectors and other um, 
uh, uh, fixed with integers that can sort of be converted into uh, Boolean representations. And of course, as you know, we will continue to prioritize, you know, review and merge contributions. Uh, so we, we, we definitely want contributions. Um, so just to go into a little bit more detail about this, this exact uh, port, just just because uh, that will have uh, some changes um, and uh, we'd love feedback from MathLab users uh, that are that are using it um, regularly. Um, so in case you aren't familiar with it, what what these these are tactics for quickly finding limits that can apply to a goal. Um, apply looks uh, the for apply you can apply to uh, environment, including the entire you know, environment containing all of MathLib, and uh, provide it with a goal, and uh, it will uh, look for a lemma that's head matches against that goal, and then try to close as many of the conditions as it can on that goal, and return um, sort of an ordered list of suggested uh, steps to apply next. Um, exact is the same, um, and it works for, um, uh, but it it will only return if it can uh, a, a lemma if it can discharge all the conditions. Um, so here's kind of an example, import MathLib, and I'm using the standard version that I've been working on, uh, but it sort of uh, works, it, it, it basically queries the MathLib environment uh, and finds a lemma that matches the goal on the right-hand side here. Um, and it uses the antecedents, sort of the, the, the uh, conditions already defined here to close that goal. Um, without those, uh, exact will fail, and you can use apply to find that that limit. Um, so now this this tactic is 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 really useful, and it's great if you have a database uh, which is called a discrimination tree that allows you to quickly find the matching limits. Um, the way MathLib handles, the, unfortunately, with the size of MathLib, there's around eight hundred thousand. Uh, theorems that can be uh, generated <laughs> uh, from an environment and initializing that takes uh, over 40 seconds. Uh, it's non-incremental. Um, so there's um, a custom executable that will build you a cache uh, out of band uh, and store it in a path that Lake knows about so you can find that. Um, but for standard, this requires, you know, MathLib has some custom logic in Lake, a custom executable for building this. And the uh, tactic itself knows where to find that database so that it can it can um, load it up. Uh, but we really want this to be uh, you know fully automatic and fast enough for interactive use. Um, this is also another database that has to get either generated by users at compile time or uh, downloaded so it adds uh, to, get to the uh, amount of uh, traffic when you run the MathLib uh, uh, cache getter. Um, so we have a new, uh, so to enable this, uh, I built a new uh, discrimination tree implementation called lazy Discrete tree um, that is in its main focus is a really fast initialization with very large pattern sets. Um, and the key, there are two things that enable that. One is we only populate the roots of the discrimination tree. So the discrimination tree basically will, uh, given a, a term that you wanna find matches, it will, it will traverse that term uh, starting from the root, uh, like the top level operation, and work its way down through the leaves. Um, so the, the lazy discrimination tree is aware of that, and it only initially populates the root. So we can do that first analysis, refine exactly what, what a subset of lemmas we now need to do further analysis on, and then incrementally expand that out. Um, this, uh, the other thing it does is because we're doing a bulk initialization of the entire environment, including imports, we can uh, uh, extract all the limits concurrently. Um, we get about, I think a 5X speed up uh, from, from that uh, on, my, on my laptop. Um, and uh, so uh, I think we get a similar ratio of about five or six X speed up by only doing the, the roots and a few uh, small tricks on the uh, representation. And so that reduced that 40 second time to about 1.36 seconds. So the first time you run this, you have to wait a slightly perceptible amount of, uh, amount of time. Uh, but then the queries itself, once that's run, even though there is this laziness, like it hasn't fully evaluated, this is still fast. Um, this isn't a branch, um, uh, but it'll be merged soon. Um, and some of the testing, I've, I've, there's there's been some changes in like the order that apply um, returns results and we'll be uh, focused on that and then merging this in so that it's, it's useful. Um, 
if you uh, get it, if you're interested in this, it'd be great to get feedback on the performance um, so we can see if there's other uh, areas to improve. Um, now, that's that's one really concrete thing. Um, longer term, stepping back, um, I think we want benchmarking for performance testing. There's been a lot of discussion about uh, what features we should have, what implementations and, and sort of interface choices we should make. Um, like there's, there's a PR, for example, on Union Find. And I think having robust uh, benchmarking for performance uh, testing and looking for regressions is uh, top of mind, um, but but not um, sort of an immediate uh, priority. Um, integration with ASOP, um, uh, better uh, going just beyond SAT to full uh, integration with like Emer uh, Isabel's uh, hammer style tactic that can call multiple solvers, including first order gear improvers. Um, I would like to work on uh, rewriting module associativity and commutativity for uh, simp and, and rewrite. This, I think, would reduce the limit count on commutative operators um, and improve consistency. You don't have to order the operations in a particular way to get uh, cancellation limits and other things to apply. Um, and then more uh, powerful induction and termination tools, which um, are actively being worked on in Lean Core, and just making sure those are uh, integrated and first first class support and all the standard. Um, and as uh, we do have a stability goal, but we expect as these things happen in 2024, at least, you know, theorems will change or be removed. And we'll be working with, uh, uh, you know, folks in MathLib to make sure we're not um, introducing too much uh, uh, disruption, um, as, as well as trying to sort of slowly deprecate things so they're not pulled out immediately. Um, uh, the the other thing that I think is we're re I'm really excited about is the documentation tool that um, uh, David uh, presented earlier in the conference, uh, and uh, so uh, I think it's important to note that standard since it is the standard library will be uh, you know available will be first class in that documentation so users will be able to assume that it exists um, and we want. Um, we want to really help people understand, you know, you know, how to use APIs, how to use lemmas, um, and uh, how to write tactics or, and use kind of the existing tactics. Um, yeah. So, um, and I've, I've kind of mentioned stability a few times. I want to, and I think this will, for 2024 at least, it's still going to be an aspirational goal in the sense that uh, uh, we will need to make changes as the library matures. Um, and we're looking at, we, we want to provide automatic fixes for those simple changes, deprecation warnings, uh, selective comp comp uh, compilation for libraries uh, to eventually enable like you to have different, um, to sort of um, support multiple versions of lean. Uh, uh, and so break break apart the tight relationship between the lean standard library and the uh, standard, um, or the lean core and the standard library uh, features. Um, uh, I, I do welcome external contributions. Uh, we are trying to um, be responsive on a PR requests. Uh, just recognize that the uh, uh, maintainer bandwidth is, uh, is is still limited, um, and it's really helpful if you you know focus on the priorities we as we've discussed and try to meet quality bars. Um, yeah, so we um, yeah the stand the bar for standard isn't just it could be useful to people or it 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 um, it's sort of uh, uh, it should be, you know, is this is this uh, important? That's broadly useful to people, and broad and not uh, particularly non mathematicians. Is it broad? Is it useful to, to um, programmers? Um, um, and uh, we really want to, you know, enable people to build uh, tactics this year. And so we'll really give an, a priority for operations and things that help with facilitating tactics. Um, and uh, but uh, you know small things like documentation enhancements, uh, tweaks, uh, additional limits, and so on are are sort of easier for us. Uh, and uh, and yeah, please please let us know about your tactics uh, that you you would like to see upstreamed. Um, I think being able to pull tactics from Mathlib into standard is uh, is a is a, it's a great um, way to get uh, quality tactics that have been sort of tested and battle hardened on large code bases. Uh, um, so that, yeah, so I see there's a comment. Okay, and so that's it, I think, for um, for me. Um. 
All right. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Um, so before we get the question queue started, I, I got, I had one message to me in Zulu during the talk from Patrick. Um, he has a question. If you remove lemmas that can be replaced by automation, should we be afraid of getting slower proofs? Uh, 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 the short answer is no. <laughs> so I think it's if, if, uh, automation slows down your, your proofs, uh, then that means the lemma was useful. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, so uh, it, that is a potential risk. Uh, if it turns out in practice to result in solar proofs, then um, uh, we probably shouldn't remove that lemma. Um, the, there are trade-offs, though, in that if we can remove lemmas, uh, even though each individual lemma is small, uh, collectively, you know, they add to download sizes, they add, add to your OLEAN sizes. So there's there's slot, there's there's performance gains to be removed to uh, from uh, potentially removing limits too. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Please raise your hands. All right. It's it's been a very long conference. <laughs> um, all right, that was our thank you, Joe, very much uh, for for sharing, letting us in on on what the upcoming plans are. And yeah, that's that's the end of our of our formal program. We have a social event planned over in Gather. Um, I, th I think we might as well go over there now, even though it's officially in a few minutes. Um, Robert, did yeah. you want to say any closing words here? I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody for, for sticking it out for four days. This has been uh, like, a, there's a ton of exciting stuff going on. Um, yeah. And it's great to see it all condensed like this. It's uh, it's going to be an exciting year. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for being together 2025. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I'd also like to thank Robert and uh, Patrick who have brought me in kind of at, at the last minute saying, hey, can you help out with this? And, and they, they've actually done most of the work. So uh, <laughs> thank you for, uh, for doing that. Um, don't sell yeah, yourself short. I'm glad I was uh, able to help out to, to the extent that I was. Um, yeah, thanks very much yeah, for taking the initiative and getting this whole thing off the ground. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure. All right. And all of you, thanks for coming. And I'll see you over in Gather. All right. Take Bye. care, everybody.